So in my previous video, <clears throat> I showed you how to calculate uh, the velocity of something based on how fast it was going. If you remember, we calculated how fast I was running on the football field. But what happens if you're actually changing your velocity, if your velocity is actually changing as you move along? Then you're going to need something else called acceleration. So today we're going to talk about that. So we started off with displacement in our last video, uh, where we actually looked at a change in our position basically. So we move from one place to another and right now we're just dealing in one dimension. We're only dealing with things moving in a line. So we found that if we took the final place that the person ended and subtracted the person, the place the person started, we got something called a displacement, which was a, a vector, a, an arrow that basically pointed from where the, where the person started to where they ended. We then from that, and knowing the time that it took them to go through that displacement, calculated something called velocity, where the velocity was simply the change in, in the position or the displacement over the time it took to go for that displacement. Uh, so we basically took the final position minus the initial position, final time, uh, basically the time we're at that final position, minus the time at the beginning, uh, or at that initial position, subtracted the two, and that gave us our velocity. So, in a similar way, if something's actually changing velocity, we can find its acceleration. So we can take basically the velocity at the final time minus the initial velocity, the velocity at time zero, and subtract those two and divide it by the time that it took to basically go from the one velocity to the other to find the acceleration. You can actually keep doing this over and over again. There are different names for the things as we go along. Generally though in this class we're only going to deal with things up to acceleration. We're going to have things that have constant acceleration. We're not going to have things that have changing acceleration. And so this is kind of the last one you have to learn. Uh, so to give you a quick example on how to calculate acceleration, again, it's very similar to calculating the velocity, uh, but let's go ahead and look at uh, Professor Puckett uh, and him driving his car. Whoa, slow down there, Professor Puckett. All right. Um, so to actually measure the acceleration, we're going to, uh, to need to know a couple of things. First of all, we're going to need to know the velocity at the beginning. That's pretty easy. Um, we know that it's not moving at all, and so we'll just call that velocity zero. The much harder part is going to be whenever we get later on to when we actually get to, let's say, this point here, where we're going to want to measure the velocity there. Uh, we don't know the velocity. An easy way would be to get the um, a radar gun or a speed gun or something like that out. Uh, I don't have either of those, so uh, we're going to have to find a different way to do this. I think the easiest way to do this is to measure the velocity at the end, uh, right near the end of our uh, of our video, um, and or where we where we're interested in it, and then we'll just. Um, we'll just basically use that as a rough estimate for how fast we're going right at the end. To do that though, we're gonna need a couple different times. Uh, we're gonna need to know basically when the thing starts and gets to the point. So first, let's get our time when we start. There's our time equals zero. Then let's look at what time it, we get at the next point. That's at two equal, t equals 2.7 seconds. And then we have t equals 3.03 seconds. With those three numbers, we should be able to basically figure out everything we need to for the rest of our, uh, of our thing. So let's go over to the um, over to our whiteboard and figure out how to get this. Okay, so um, now we're going to go ahead and do our problem. Again, like, like before uh, and like we always do whenever we start out a problem, we're going to start by drawing a picture. So let's uh, get a quick picture of, ha of what happened. Here's our road. Uh, we started with a car um, over here. Um, I'm a really good car drawer. Look at that. Now that's Professor Pocket, as you can tell. Um, we start with this not moving. Okay. Uh, so uh, this was at t equals zero, and uh, we know that the v at that point was equal to zero. And I'm just going to call these initial because I, I know that I'm going to use this as my initial uh, point. So let's put a little zero for initial. Okay. And then at some later point, we had the car over here, which is where we're interested in it, basically when it crossed the middle of the video. Um, and there it is there. 
it has now some velocity. I would draw the velocity over here normally, but I can also draw it behind it, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, and I'm gonna label this V2 for reasons that'll become apparently apparent pretty quickly. Uh, the problem with V2 uh, is that uh, we don't actually know it, um, which is unfortunate because if we were trying to, if we're actually trying to find the acceleration, if you remember our equation from for acceleration at the beginning of the video, uh, it's equal to uh, basically the velocity at the end of the part that we're interested in minus the initial velocity divided by the time at the end minus the initial time. Okay. Um, again, unfortunately, uh, we have v0, we have t0, we have t final. Uh, if you remember, the time at which it crossed uh, the, 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 um, that middle line was t, um, t final was equal to uh, 3.03 .03 seconds. Okay. But we don't have v final. Now, like I said, there's no real way for us to find exactly what v final is. Uh, if I had a, again a radar gun or something, we could have actually measured it. Uh, we're going to do something else instead. If you remember, we 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 took the time of three data points. The the last two data points were basically so this this was whenever um, the wheel basically touched that point that we were interested in. Um, but we also had the time when the car passed a uh, a um, a point right before <laughs> right before that, um, basically where where it, where it passed a another the beginning of a parking spot. So we know so we know the basically the time, uh, and I'm just going to call this T1 of when it passed the beginning parking spot was equal to 2.70 seconds. And so because we have the time when it passed that one, uh, we still don't have the velocity, but we do know the distance between this one and this one. And so just like we did in our last video, we can actually find the approximate velocity the car had right near the end of the point that we're interested in. And so that'll give us a velocity to actually work with. It's not going to be the exact velocity, but it's going to be pretty close to the to the final velocity at this point, um, at the point uh, t final. And so hopefully uh, we'll go ahead and do that, um, and then we'll uh, we'll figure out uh, what our um, what our v final is, um, and then uh, once we find out our v final, uh, then we'll be able to find our acceleration. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and start doing that. To do that, though, we're going to need a little bit more information. Now, if we go back to the video, uh, you can go ahead and count, and you'll notice that there are one, two, three, four, five, uh, basically, parking spaces that uh, Professor Puckett traveled in the time from T0 to, to the T final. Um, and there, of course, are, are four between uh, between the the um, between the where he started and T initial. So we're going to need that kind of information uh, to uh, to figure things out. So let's go ahead and calculate the final velocity first. So let's look at the 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 um, uh, our equation for velocity. If you remember, our equation for velocity is basically the x. Uh, the, the x at one point, um, so you know they, they've been using x final minus x initial divided by the time final minus the time initial. So it's the final uh, the, the final position minus the initial position divided by the final time minus the initial time. Now for us, we're only interested in you know what we're trying to do right now is calculate basically this part of the uh, of our equation. We're basically just going back and doing the same calculation we did in the last video. And so our final time is, is the and, and final position is the same final time and final position that we talked about before. But the initial time 
uh, is actually you know our middle time, basically that 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 um, that time, the the second data point that we're basically interested in. Um, and so, if you want to, we could go ahead and just draw, uh, redraw this problem, just looking at kind of this smaller problem that we're doing, which is uh, trying to find the velocity, where we basically have gone from you know this this point. Um, at 3.03 seconds and starting at 2.7 seconds um, and then we can also look at what the distances are again uh, there are, um, there are four, uh, four th so so let's go ahead and get our coordinate system started out I'm gonna call this point right here basically where the car starts x equals 0 all right I'm gonna call, and that once you do that, this point, normally we set up a, a coordinate system where um, this is positive x, and this direction is positive y. Okay. I don't know why I can't draw y, but that's normally positive y. Um, and so this point, again, uh, there are four parking spaces uh, to the left at this point, so so basically, and it turns out that one of our parking spaces I actually measured um, is about 2.74 meters, and so if we go ahead and do four times 2.74, we can get the distance, um, and so it turns out that uh, this distance from our x equals zero to where our car reached at 2.7 seconds is 10 point so x one is equal to 10.96 meters, all right? And then this point right here is just one more parking space, our, our final point, and so that's 13.7 13, 13 meters, okay? And so now we have kind of all the information we need, so again, this final distance right here is x final is equal to um, and we're going to put negatives in front of those because again we've defined uh, we've defined the the right as positive x, so the left is negative x. So this x final is minus 13.7 meters, and this x initial or x one we've been calling it um, is equal to um, is is equal to 10.96 meters. Okay. So now we can go ahead and find what our final velocity approximately is, again, this is approximately, um, uh, because again, we're not calculating the actual final velocity, we're just getting approximately what it was at the end. Um, and so we're gonna get that just by taking 10 point, uh, nope, that's not right. Uh, let's see. Um, That's actually uh, 13 minus 13.7. Um, and we're then going to subtract minus 10.96 meters. All right, so that's the x final minus the x initial, okay? And then we're gonna divide it by those times. So the x final time was 3.03 seconds. Um, and then we subtract 2.70 seconds. Okay. And then that'll give us an answer of, let's go ahead and put that in our calculators. negative 8.3 um, meters per second. And again, you get a, you get a, a value that's negative uh, because we're traveling to the left and we've defined the right as positive. Okay, and so that's, that's what our final velocity is. Okay, now, now that we've done all that, we can finally get to actually finding our acceleration we know approximately what our final velocity is, so we can take acceleration is equal to v final minus v initial. Again, those are vectors divided by time final minus t initial. 
And our final velocity is what we just found. It's minus 8.3 meters per second. We subtract our initial velocity. Well, our initial velocity was just zero. We started from rest. Professor Puckett started from rest. Okay. And then our final time was at 3.03 seconds. And our initial time again was also time equals zero because that's how we set it. So if we take that and calculate it out, we get that our acceleration is approximately equal to 2.74 meters per second squared. Okay, and that's our final answer for the acceleration with one caveat, which is that I lost my minus sign. Well, it's minus 2.4. 2.74 meters per second squared. A couple things we want to check. First of all, we want to check that our units have worked out. If you see, we have a meter per second on the top. We have a second on the bottom, so we get meter per second divided by seconds. Um, that gives us a meter per second per second, which gives us a meter per second squared, so our units are right. Um, we want to check that minus sign. That minus sign indicates that the acceleration was to the left. That makes sense because we, uh, we started out going with no speed to the left, and then we started increasing our speed to the left, or, or the magnitude of the speed increased to the left. And so that's why we got a negative acceleration. It also matches the, our negative velocity, although that doesn't always need to be the case. It's only the case whenever we're speeding up like this. Um, finally, we just want to make sure that that seems like an appropriate number. Um, uh, the, if you remember uh, from, a, from, a, from some stuff I think we did in class, um, uh, velocity uh, is a is um, a meter per second is approximately uh, two miles per hour. So by the time by the end of uh, the the video or by by the point that by that v final, Professor Puckett was moving about uh, 17 miles an hour or something like that. And what this uh, what this means that it's that he's increasing the acceleration means that he's increasing about two times 2.7 or about five miles per hour per second. So he's, he's getting an extra five miles per hour every second, uh, which seems about right. Um, that means that uh, uh, it, to get to um, 60 miles an hour, um, uh, it's gonna be uh, 60 divided by five, which is about 12. It's gonna take him about 12 seconds to get up to 60 miles per hour, which is pretty slow, but also I don't think he was accelerating that fast in his vehicle. So again, all of our numbers seem to make sense. The result seems good, the sign is correct, and everything that we've done pretty much makes sense. Uh, I hope this was uh, a, a good problem. The types of things I wanted you to understand from this and get from this was A, some refresher on how to calculate uh, velocities. The other thing was how to break up a complicated problem. This had three different steps into smaller problems. Again, we first found approximately the final velocity by using the average velocity between the two, two points near the end and then uh, found the acceleration from there. And the last thing, of course, was just to give you an introduction on how to do these acceleration problems. I hope this all makes sense. If not, I would recommend uh, watching it through again, uh, skipping around, make sure things make sense. Um, and if you have any questions, please ask them in class. Thank you, and have a good day.